All right, guys, Ashby FC here, and welcome to another Game Pickups episode. Uh, quite a few things to show you for this one. I've gathered up over over many months. It's been since the last episode. Uh, so let's get right into it. I'm going to start off with a couple of retro consoles. Um, my plan is to have all the retro consoles from NES right up to, what, well, um, PS2 and what have you, 7th generation or whatever it was. No, sorry, 6th generation. Oh, I don't know, I forget. I want to have them all hooked up, all the retro consoles hooked up so I can go back and play some of the classics. Because, um, as I stated in the last video that I made an appearance in, talking about the 8th generation, this current generation, how oh, I'm just so done and fed up with modern gaming. I've had enough. My excitement's gone, my enthusiasm's gone. I, I just don't give a shit about it no more. I don't care about PS5, I don't care about Xbox Series, whatever. I mean, I might still, I might get them, I don't know, but right now I'm just, I don't give a shit. So fuck the future, you know, I'm going back to the past. That's my plan. So I'm all hooked up, ready to go. Gonna go back and play some classics on the actual hardware. Um, see, I need to repurchase a few and uh, I'm gonna get one of those upscaler things you can get. They're kind of expensive, 150 for a decent one, but they like drastically improve the image. Because if you ever hooked up old consoles to a modern TV, like in like a 4K TV and the bigger it is, the worse it's gonna look. Uh, yeah, the, um, they just look terrible. Um, so some of them don't even have like, like my current one here. Um, it's not even a SCART um, input, so yeah, those little boxes you can get, they can let you connect them via HDMI, basically, so uh, that's the plan, so yeah, got a, got a bunch of the retro consoles ready to go. So we'll start off with, um, boom, got a Dreamcast, this is my third Dreamcast, uh, with the exception of one, none of them are my original retro consoles I owned as a kid. Um, because I did, I sold them all back in the day for whatever reason. I regret it, but I did. With the exception of my NES, my parents gave that away, and I still remember that day how gutted I was because we'd got a Super Nintendo. Uh, oh no, was it? No, we got a Sega Mega Drive. I mean, my mum was like, "You don't need two consoles. We're going to give this one away to your friends who don't have one." And I was just, I was so mad. So yeah, that wasn't my choice there. But yeah, this is my third Dreamcast. Uh, I had one back in the day. I sold that, I think, towards a. I think one of the GameCube or something at the time, or some games for it or whatever. Uh, and then the one before this, um, which I bought, repurchased about 10 years ago. Same applies to a bunch in the Apple, I got them about 10 years ago, so I still had them for a while. But the one before this, um, it randomly used to reset, so you can see where there's a problem there. You might get five minutes for it, does it? You might get an hour, but any time it could just reset. Uh, and it turned that horrible, horrible yellow colour that some of these white or like grey, light coloured consoles do. That, and it looked horrendous. Uh, so I got this, I think it was about 60 quid on eBay or something. Not too bad. Uh, it was complete. Uh, all the wires, all the cables and stuff, controller, uh, and it worked perfect. Had to um, test it out. Looks terrible on my TV, but um, yeah, it's working nice. So uh, yeah, okay. So that's the Dreamcast sorted out. Um, and uh, I also got, uh, check this out. A PS1! Remember these? They came out in about 2000, maybe? Uh, they're actually called PS1, O-N-E. Um, so they were a smaller version of the original PlayStation. Uh, but the cool thing is, you could, uh, you could get screens for them. You could attach a screen that would fold and open. So you could, they'd be semi-portable. You still need to have them plugged in. You could plug them into like a main socket. Or I think you could even get like a... You could plug them into like a cigarette charger on like uh, in your car or whatever. And I loved mine. It was awesome. I used to play it at night in bed, my little screen, my earphones in. And I remember, uh, t I remember taking it on holiday with me um, when I went to Cyprus back when I was 12, maybe. Um, I was playing Metal Gear Solid on the plane for about half an hour until the whole system was turning it off, which I was pissed off about. But I, re I just remember that holiday, I used to sit on the balcony, I had this amazing view, you could see the beach, um, about the street below, and uh, just this amazing view. I used to sit there until the sun came up playing. Uh, on the PS1 with the screen playing Resident Evil uh, and I just remember that I can still pitch that image a little 12 year old me or 13 over I was just sat on that balcony beautiful weather beautiful view seeing the ocean here in the ocean a little bit quiet street below watching the sun come up playing Resident Evil that's just such a, a fun happy memory I have right there I don't know why but uh, oh I wish I could go back just me back then playing Resident Evil not a care in the world just young and happy and ugh. Now I'm just an old, miserable sack of shit. But uh, yeah, PS1. I got this for seven quid. 
bargain. Well, it was 14 quid, another 7 quid for uh, postage and package, but they don't sell for a lot anyway, but uh, still a pretty good deal. I am going to get a screen for it. The games that came with it. <laughs> Not the uh, best uh, bunch of games, but uh, it come with the Flintstones um, Bedrock Bowling. Yeah, that's a thing, apparently. Um, what else have we got? Uh, the Simpsons Wrestling, the god awful Simpsons Wrestling, so that's two copies I now have of Simpsons Wrestling because I showed that in a previous episode that I got, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> a game called Street Racer. Like, look at that cover. You just know that's all sorts of terrible. <sighs> Jesus, don't even, don't even think I want to try that one. Uh, and then another copy of Street Racer, because you, can, you can't have one copy of Street Racer, hell no! So good, you gotta have two. Okay, no. Um, yeah. So that's what came with it. And then uh, I actually got these two. Uh, I got Command and Conquer on PlayStation. Never actually played this version. Fever forgot it existed. They did, they did. Uh, Red Alert as well on PlayStation. I think they did Command and Conquer on Sega Saturn as well. And then there was the N64 version, which was actually its own version, not a port. Um, which had a little more like 3D polygons. Never really played that much, just never seen a friend playing on it. But uh, yeah, the Command and Conquer out there. But come on, you're going to play strategy games, you play them on PC, not console. And then I got the Criminal Underrated Siphon Filter, the original Siphon Filter. What a great game this was. I did three Siphon Filters on PlayStation. I remember playing this back in the day, and I just loved how you could taser people and then set them on fire. If you kept hold of the button, they'd start to smoke and then they'd set on fire and it was one of the most amazing things I'd seen uh, back then, I used to do it all the time. Such a great game, I only really did, um, I think I did one PS2 game, which was the fourth game, and then two PSP games, and then the series has disappeared since, it's been gone for a while. But this was by, um, I forget the name of the studio, is it, they might have changed, I think they're known as Bend Studios now, they may have changed their name, there may be something different back in the day, but uh, they did the more recent, um, Days Gone on PS4, which I actually really enjoyed. That, that the reviews were ridiculous for that. Uh, although they did also make um, Bubsy 3D. So yeah. So yeah, there you go, Siphon Filter. But yeah, here's my um, here's my original PlayStation. Now this is the one console that I actually had as a kid. This is my original. Look at it. Look at the color of it. It's meant to be grey. It's meant to be that colour. It's gone this putrid, yellowy... Why do they do that? It's... Well, I know why they do it. I looked it up. It's something to do with the chemical in the plastic. But when they get exposed to artificial light, which how you meant to help that, they turn that horrible colour. It's the worst colour. Of all the colours they could... Look at it! It's horrible! It's AIDS! That's what it is. This console has AIDS. The thing is... I pulled my consoles in a drawer, they are in a drawer for a few years and I pulled them out because I got a unit to display them on and they'd all turn this colour so they weren't exposed to artificial light so the only logical thing I think of is that drawer was cursed! It's horrible! But yeah, this this is the, the original one I had since I was a little kid. Um, I told a story in one of the videos how I broke it and I was playing Driver and it pissed me off because I couldn't do this mission and I hammer fisted it and some it broke. And I just lied, I said it stopped working and my parents got it fixing me. If they'd have known, I'd have punched it. They wouldn't have done it. But it's also it also chipped as well, so it could play backups. And I also told that story. I used to rent games and blockbusters and just copy them. And I was a little pirate, and then I used to sell them at school as well. Yeah, I made money. I was thinking, but yeah, look at that, man. I don't want to throw it away because it's. I wonder if there's a way you can get the color back. But uh, I'm good about that. It's a real shame because I've had this for so many years. And then also, <sighs> same with the Super Nintendo, I've had this for about 10 years. Look at that. Look at the colour of that. It's just that one front section that's turned that horrible, horrible... I don't understand. So I've got to rebuy one of these as well. <sighs> yeah, anyway, let's move on, going on here. Um, what else did I get? Oh, sorry. Also, uh, the Dreamcast, I just forgot, the Dreamcast did come with a game. I nearly told the seller, I'll tell you what mate, flush that down the fucking toilet, I don't want that piece of shit, but I got it anyway. You wait for Dream Soccer. 
of all the fucking Dreamcast games to have, you you wait for Dream Soccer. I know you spell this called soccer. Football! But, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I don't even know I want this in my collection. I might just burn it. Like, Jesus. Now, have you noticed, if you collect retro games, right, you'll know the price over the past few years. It just, they just keep shooing up. It's, you've got to start donating organs if you want to buy some games. The price is ridiculous. Hundreds, even thousands now for some games. It's got so bad. But there's always one genre game that's worth nothing, no matter how far you go. But go back to the Atari, and you'll see this particular genre game that's worth nothing. And what is that? Sports games. They are worth nothing on anything, no matter how old they are. Because they're the shittest games the world has ever seen. They're, they're worth nothing. They're always, they're always just a few quid. No matter how old they are, because they're the most garbage, shitty games. It still blows my mind. The people that buy FIFA every year. The, the people that will actually buy a new console just to play FIFA. <sighs> I, I'll never understand. I'll never understand. My nephew's one of them. He'll probably get a PS5 or a Xbox Series X to just play the next FIFA. The next bunch of FIFAs or what? It's... <sighs> I, I, oh my god. Baffles me. Absolutely baffles me. One of life's biggest mysteries. Anyway. What else did I get? Oh, boom! On PC, I got uh, Star Wars Dark Forces. Um, complete the box. This is 19.94. This was about seven quid bargain. Um, you can actually get this on Steam, and it's on Origin as well, I think. It's basically a shooter, uh, old school. It's a Doom clone, like many shooters were, but it's Star Wars. No, it's Doom with a Star Wars skin. It's a lot of fun. There's a sequel as well, uh, Dark Forces 2, which is even better. It's a, it's a fun little game. Um, so yeah. 1994 this, so, yep! What the hell is my camera telling me there? Something just popped up on screen. Would out of space, maybe? Possibly, right, let's move on. Uh, what else did I get? Oh, hello! Uh, Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo! I remember playing this at a friend's house, I did not have a clue what I was doing. Um, it scared me as well, so I was a bit scared of dinosaurs after watching Jurassic Park as a kid. We used to have recurring dreams that I was being chased by a giant T-Rex, or it'd be outside my house and looking through the window, and like to see what it looks through the car at the kids, it's just its eye. I used to always have that dream, and it knew, it, knew, it knew I was there, I was always hiding under the window, or I was outside trying to get in the house and it was coming, it was always huge though. Or it was raptors in the house and I'd be hiding in like the ceiling or whatever. Uh, I used to have, like, seriously, I used to have those dreams over and over again. But yeah, it's like, it played from like an isometric view, you can see on the back there. And they used to game the dinosaurs just like jump out the trees and stuff. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, where to go. I, I, I should probably try this again, see if I can get anywhere. I had the, the Sega Mega Drive game, which is a, a side scroller. I can never get past the first level. Um, but yeah, Jurassic Park. That was only really cheap as well, about 12 quid, so pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Um, I'll tell you what, as well, uh, I got a Sega Saturn game. I was just looking, what's the cheapest Sega Saturn game I could find? And this was one that kept popping up. This was like a fiver. It's called Firestorm Thunderhawk 2. So I'm guessing there was one before this. Never heard of it until now. Uh, it looks like some sort of combat helicopter game. Something I probably fucking hate. I haven't tried it yet. So I, might, I think I might just have to get another Sega Saturn. Because this one... Uh, I'm not entirely sure if the laser's going, or if it's the discs themselves, but it, I was testing some games, it wasn't reading some of them, it was just going straight to like the music menu, like it doesn't recognise the disc, um, but then some were working, so it could be dodgy discs, it could be dodgy laser, hopefully I don't have to buy another one, because they ain't exactly cheap, but I didn't test this one yet, but that, that disc is pretty scratched actually, so I don't know, I could try cleaning the laser, I really don't have to buy another one, it's going to cost me a fortune all this. But yeah, uh, Firestorm Thunderhawk 2, whatever the fuck it is. Um, what else we got? Oh, hello. Um, some original Xbox games. Yeah, I'm trying to build this collection. Uh, the next episode I do, I'll probably will have an Xbox, original Xbox to show you. I'm about to buy one on eBay. I just spotted one for like 45 quid, complete, good condition. So uh, I'll probably have that for whenever I do the next episode. Um, but yeah, I got uh, Mercenaries Playground Destruction. I already have this on PS2, played it on PS2 back in the day. Brilliant game, so underrated. And one of the most disappointing sequels ever. Did not like Mercenaries 2. Good God, that one sucked. 
Um, Matrix Path of Neo. I briefly played this on PS2 back in the day. I remember thinking it was actually alright. But I, I, think I just had so many games, I just never got back around to playing it. But I want to check this one out again. So I remember it, it was actually kind of good. There's another one. Uh, Enter the Matrix, was it called? I never played that one. But I remember a friend in high school used to always go on about it. It was obsessed. It was obsessed with the Matrix. Um, I was never really a fan of the Matrix films. I only saw the first two. But um, yeah, Matrix Path of Neo. And then I also got Star Wars Obi Wan. This was like a quid. Um, but. Uh, I can't play this because it only works on original Xbox, so I'm going to have to wait till I get my Xbox. It is not backwards compatible with 360 or Xbox One. And it's supposed to be a pretty good game, actually. It's like the, the Jedi Knight games, you know, like, uh, Jedi Academy and whatever the other ones do. There was a few of them that were pretty good. Yeah, this was just Xbox exclusive, it wasn't on anything else. Um, and it does look pretty good. So, uh, yeah, when I get my Xbox, I want to try this one out. So, yeah, Star Wars Obi-Wan. Um... I've been going through a Bond phase lately. I you might have noticed I uploaded a couple of uh, I'm doing retro reviews now at the moment. Um, I uh, did a review of Goldeneye, the all-time classics, and the, the pretty shit Tomorrow Never Dies. I was playing through some of the Bond games and playing. What I watched through a bunch of the Bond movies. Um, and yeah, I got these two. Um, I got Goldeneye 007 on Wii. Do you, th do you think this came out like a year after? On 360 and PS3, I think it was, was it Goldeneye Reloaded. Um, I got this when it came out, I think for Christmas or something. Um, again, I need to go back. It's been so many years since I played. When did it come out? It was a while ago, anyway. But um, I remember I was kind of looking forward to it, thinking it was like a, a faithful remake of Goldeneye. It's not. If I remember right, it's it's a good game. It's a solid game um, in itself. But it like shouldn't be called Goldeneye. I remember just I remember playing through and thinking this isn't Goldeneye. It was like totally different. It should not have called. It obviously, was going for nostalgia, but it's like its own game. Um, I mean, just don't attempt to remake Goldeneye. Some games just leave them alone. But I remember it, it's a fun game. I never played the multiplayer, just the campaign. But it, it, it's totally not Goldeneye. It's not even Pierce Brosnan. It's Daniel Craig, and I just remember it's pretty much a very different game. But it was still fun from what I remember. I'll have to try it again. Um, and also Quantum of Solace on Xbox 360. I've never played this one. I only ever played up to Russia with Love. I never played beyond that. Um, so there was like, you no, know, I think I briefly played that GoldenEye Rogue Agent, which was garbage. I think that might have been the last one I played. I quickly gave up on that because it was shit. Um, I didn't play this one. And there was a Bloodstorm. And then I think the last one was Legends, which was meant to be like the worst bottom game so just typical Activision about to lose the license quickly chuck out a turd and then that's it done um, this one's apparently good though so I hear um, I'll have to try this one out at some point but uh, yeah bottom games have been missing for many many years now um, I don't know who has the license for them anymore um, kind of a shame really because there's always potential for bottom games so I think they should come back maybe we'll see them next gen probably not Watch EA get the license, and yeah, it's not even. All right, let's get to the final bunch. Shot everywhere. Jesus, where I put these? All right, okay, put these here. So, um, yeah, these are the last lot, I think. So yeah, I got a bunch of Sega Master System games. Never owned a Master System. I need to get one. I had a friend who had one back in the day. So I, I, I played a reasonable amount of Master System at his house, but there's a lot of games I didn't play. But yeah, uh, for the first time, I own some games. Just got to get the system now. Um, so, uh, Jurassic Park. Never played any of these. It doesn't look like the Sega Mega Drive version. It looks like its own game. Because Master System was 8-bit. Um, Mega Drive was 16-bit with a blast processing. There we got Batman Returns. Again, I think there was also Batman Returns on Super Nintendo and Mega Drive. I don't reckon, I don't, don't look familiar on the back. Um, I remember the shitty one that looked like Mortal Kombat, it was terrible. And then there was another, there was one I played on Super Nintendo. It was the side scroll of Beat'em Up. It was around Christmas. I can't, was this based off a film? Oh, I don't know. It's Batman Returns. Uh, Alien Storm. Looks kind of like Contra, I guess. 
run off the cover in the back, like a side scrolling shooter. I don't know. Um, Jungle Book, this was a game I did have on Sega Mega Drive. I can never get past that fucking snake. What was he called? This is a boss fight with a snake. I couldn't do it. So I don't know again if this is a poor or its own version. But yeah. These were all really cheap, by the way, just a few quid. Uh, the Terminator. I only remember playing the Terminator on Sega Mega Drive. Terminator 2, maybe, at a friend's house. And it was like, it was. The bit I played was a first person perspective. You were just like shooting the Terminators. It was like an arcadey feel to it. Um, yeah. And then uh, Sonic 2. Yeah, they did uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on my system. Played and beat both of these. Um, they are not ports of the Mega Drive versions, they are their own versions. Um, and for 8 bit, obviously they're inferior to the 16 um, bit classics. But uh, they're, they're alright, you know. They are slower and they don't look as nice, but they've got some pretty good music and they are fun. Uh, Sonic 1 and 2 on my system. So, um, yeah, that's those right there. As I said, I've got to get a Master System. These two games I really, really want on Master System that are pretty expensive and hard to find, those being. Um, Ease, the original Ease game, uh, Ease, uh, what's it called, uh, Vanished Omens, was it? Absolutely brilliant game uh, from a criminally underrated RPG series that's still going to this day, it goes back to the 80s, and uh, the original Fantasy Star, which is fucking brilliant on um, Master System. Um, I want to get the other ones on Mega Drive as well, but they are very expensive. Um, is that everything? No, it's not, one more. Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, on Sega Mega Drive, it's the final game, sorry this has been so long, um, Streets of Rage 2. Now all I need to get is Streets of Rage 3, which is by far the most expensive. That thing is not cheap. But um, the first Streets of Rage, which I've got back there, um, that's not too expensive. This one is reasonably expensive. I got this really cheap because um, it was in a really beaten up case. I think I got it for 17 quid on a bid, I won it. The case was like all battered and ripped and stuff, but I had uh, two copies of The Lion King for some reason, so I just put it in <laughs> one of those cases. Um, I think it was down as an X-Rental version, because it's, it's got those, it's got a horrible manual in there that's all yellow, like it's been in a house of heavy smokers. I'm not even going to smell that. But yeah, yeah, the rental, if I remember right, it's... Oh, like it's going so far back to when I used to rent games at Bob. Because they used to have black and white instructions, didn't they? Because they were normally in colour. The rental places were in black and white. And it says here, there's a label stuck on. Please do not deface instructions. So this was possibly from Blockbusters or some other rental store back in the day, which is why it might have been cheap. Uh, so yeah, the instructions look like shit, but who really cares? I know some collectors have to have like instruction stuff. I don't care about the instructions. I just need a reasonably conditioned box and obviously the game. But um, the game itself is there. It's got a sticker on it. I might be able to peel off. Don't know if I risk that. But it's a little worn on top. But I'm not too fussed. As I said, I don't, they don't need to be perfect for me. But that's the actual game. So yeah, let get Street Ridge three. Arguably, I've got a lot of nostalgia for the original because I played that, but you could probably say this is the best Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage 4 is coming actually as well, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. Streets of Rage 2 right there. Still, that's 17 quid. That's Compared to what it normally goes for, that ain't bad at all. That ain't bad. It's very good. Uh, yeah, so that is... Duh, duh, duh. That's... Yeah, that's everything. Is that all everything? I think it's everything. Yeah. Woo! Okay. Yeah, that's... Uh, those are all my pickups. Um for this episode. Uh, hopefully I'll do another one um, before too long. I'll try not to leave it um, this long. One of the reasons I left it this long is because I didn't... I held off obviously for Christmas, around Christmas, buying anything because it's expensive. I've got to buy more presents and stuff and then I, I got a lot of stuff to pay for in January so it's kind of why there was a, a bigger gap. But um, yeah, hopefully I might have a couple more retro consoles to show you next time. Um, and yeah. All right, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna keep rambling on. So uh, that's uh, this episode of uh, Game Pickups done. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll uh, I'll see you in whatever the next video might be. See you later.